So, a welcome to another episode of Tommy's Driving Antics. Today we are heading up to Yorkshire. Um, my wife's pregnant, so I booked us a stay at somewhere called Grantley Hall. We're gonna go there, relax, and enjoy. It is a four hour journey from where we are, just outside London right now. So we are taking the A12 Superfast. The real reason I'm taking the A12 Superfast is not only that it's fun, but also because compared to something like the events for SVJ, it has tons more storage. I mean, it's not as much as like a regular car, but if you come and look at this, it's got loads of storage in the back. So it means that we can take, you know, um, airplane, um, handheld, handheld, carry-on luggage style. Now I can take a bag and a duffel bag as well, as well as all our coats, all our wards and everything we're gonna need during the journey. So um, yeah, it should be quite interesting. I'm curious to see if I get there on one tank. The range on this car sometimes is a bit optimistic, I think. It'll say about 400 miles. Um, but I'm not sure if it'll do that because it is, again, a V12. But let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to check all my tyre pressures. Because it is a long journey, I don't want the tyres to um, wear unevenly. Um, it's about 230 miles there, 230 miles back. So I'm going to check all the tyre pressures um, and then um, make my way. As you can see, I've got tyre stickers. I have said nothing about them. I just thought they made the car look a bit cooler. So uh, we're at Esso, which is also a McDonald's now. I'm gonna fill up the car and um, we're gonna see how much um, how much it costs. I need to unlock the car to get into the fuel tank. It's so annoying in this car. So um, I'm hoping to have an idea. I'm not sure if that's expensive for now. It sounds like that's expensive. 167. Greg's on the seat. Fucking burrito and Greg's on my Ferrari seat. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, that wasn't the 
full level that I am allowed to set, I'm allowed to fuel up to 140 pounds when I pay by phone uh, as in I don't have to go inside the petrol station so I'm assuming it's a 90 90 litre tank so I was pretty low um, that's impressive no wonder it always says I have loads of range If this was a warm or at least a dry day, this road would have been epic. Uh, the car is so pointy. You look at the car and it doesn't look like it's going to be a super athletic, you know, super nose um, sharp car, but it is. The suspension setup, uh, the way they've done it, it's got a lot of camber on the front wheels, a lot of negative camber on the front wheels. And I think um, it's towed in perfectly. So it's just very darty. You need minimal steering input. A lot of that is also down to the variable steering rack. So at uh, low speeds, the rack is very light and at high speeds, it changes. But the car kind of predicts what you want based on your driving style and based on um, your braking and everything. So sometimes you turn a little bit and it turns a lot. And sometimes you turn a lot and it turns a little bit. So it, it takes a second to get used to, but it is immaculate once you do. Guys, we have got to Grindley Hall. We have arrived at Granny Hall after about three and a half hours and around 250 miles. We are here. Um, it looks stunning. The grounds are amazing. The grass is freshy, freshy mowed. But um, yeah, I actually don't know where I'm going to. I assume the place this big that looks like Granny Hall. Oh, we've got you again. That is um, Rolls Royce demo car. and DBX. Of course we get premier parking. <laughs> Hi. Hi, thank you very much, how are you? Yeah, it's very, very well. Uh, We're just going to be putting it right on the front for you. Okay, literally perfect. Just <laughs> so, you sound very familiar. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your name, sorry? Uh, Harry Dawes. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tommy, nice to meet you. You can just call me Tommy, man. It's fine, so it makes me sound like my dad. <laughs> I recognised it, I saw the colourway on the car, yeah. and I was like, I only know one colourway for this car. <laughs> so it is, that's We've arrived at Granny Hall, it's been amazing. We've just had some wonderful dinner at the restaurant, the Sean Rankin restaurant. It was a 10 course meal, it was amazing. Um, I really liked the um, venison, I think it was that I really liked. It was just, there were so many courses I've kind of like forgotten what there was. I'll definitely be coming back here. My wife and I have agreed we're going to come here once a quarter at least. So I'm going to be driving up here a few times in several different cars. Um, speaking of cars, the drive up here in the A12 was immaculate. Um, it rained a lot. So I had the car in wet mode in the last half of the journey. Um, it was slip and sliding a little bit, but it handled it perfectly well. I think I've got to grips with the car now. This is the longest I've driven it so far. And um, yeah, I will be looking forward to uh, doing more on the way back tomorrow. Well, dinner, as you just saw, this is some more of the hotel. That is a yacht. Is this the yacht room? Yeah, I think they're having like a yacht meeting. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. around too much. Oh, I'll try not to. <laughs> Thank you. No Bye. Bye. I know, <laughs> a bit too easy. So we're leaving Granny Hall now. It was an amazing stay. Um, gonna get in the car. It's a bit wet right now, so it's gonna be a slippy ride home. I'll try and log more on the way back. And then, um, yeah, uh, don't know what else to say. I'm tired. <laughs> it's raining, but it's weird. I'm not wet. I know. <laughs> so, this is definitely my favorite angle of the A12 super fast. I think it's just utterly gorgeous. So, um, on my model, I have a tailor made car. So, it's got a uh, tailor made painted stripe down the middle of the car, um, literally painted on to the paint. <laughs> it's not vinyl. Um, I've also got carbon on my lower diffuser, as you can see here by the exhaust. The center is painted and I think it looks better like that. I think too much carbon offsets um, the, the beauty of the paintwork. This is um, Electrico Blue, or Blue Electrico is what they call it. And I think it's my favorite color. I always wanted an A12 in this color, so I'm glad I finally found one. As you can see, more carbon on the side. We've got painted shields necessity for any v12 ferrari and then we also have the tire stickers that i put on aftermarket myself at a company called tire stickers that were based in leicestershire they did a really good job the stickers have stayed on immaculately well um immaculately well amazingly well and they are made of rubber as well so um yeah the car's just gorgeous 
here's another amazing angle of the car you see the long bonnet where the v12 resides um what's interesting is that the entirety of the 6.5 liter v12 is behind the front axle um so when you open the bonnet the engine sits far back and that's done for weight distribution ironically this car is actually rear bias in terms of weight distribution it's not perfectly 50 50 i believe it's 51 percent rear 49 percent of the front or around that region um it's such an amazing car i love it so much the only one thing i don't like about the design i love all the scoops i love all the vents i love this duct back here i love this like lipped spoiler the only thing i don't like is this and i feel like i know it keeps the fry tradition but i don't think it's necessary to have a keyhole on the side of your car i feel like they could have hidden it in a better way but like i was saying an amazing car this is a beautiful angle of it the exhaust note is glorious i think what i want to do is put an exhaust valve controller so i can open and close the valve valves and i don't really want to put a custom uh, exhaust on the car just because i like the fact that i can cruise and i can chill and relax in it but yeah an amazing car like i said this paintwork just stands out blue electrico and i I don't want to sound basic, but I think I'm going to get my next Ferrari in the same color, depending on what that is, we'll see. As you can see, it's still raining, um, terribly. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to the drive because I was hoping for, again, a dry drive that I could fire it back down the country roads on, but alas, we are blessed with rainy weather. Maybe it's God just telling me to be chill um, and have got a baby on the way, so I should really be chill. Uh. Just for your information, the roads are a bit wet today. Okay, so thanks. Be careful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good one. We've got a beautiful Taycan here. I can't tell. Oh, GTS, just like mine, but in ice grey metallic. Uh, my one's in Corolla white metallic. Got a nice little buggy here. I want one of those. <laughs> just to cruise the grounds. Tommy, look at us they gave us. What is this that supposed to be? Chocolate. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's a moisturizer. Remember they said for the way home, if you want to yeah. go, you've got a package. Any nibbles? Let's go home. Oh, you can't. got the car in wet mode the damping over these bumps is immaculate the car does an, an insane job i think ferrari really nailed it by putting bumpy road mode in their cars i think a lot of supercar manufacturers need to take after that um concept in their in their vehicles and i think with the newer model cars we'll start seeing that as supercars become more dailyable it's going to be a necessity to have them more usable on a daily uh daily manner so um yeah, it, it, it's really good. I think that the next generation Lamborghinis will take a lot from Ferrari. Um, Ferrari seems to be a generation ahead, ahead in terms of technology. Um, as you know, the Aventador was introduced in 2011, I think, and the Huracan's been out since about 2014. So they are quite dated now, whereas Ferrari's managed to you know, update their models uh, just a little bit more. So I'll be interested to see what Lamborghini does. But honestly, this is probably my favorite supercar on a daily basis because I've been able to drive it to do normal things. I've got enough space for luggage. It's comfortable inside. It handles incredibly well. As you see there, very direct with the steering, um, very sensible, even in wet conditions. I never really feel afraid in this car. The only time I, I have been afraid is when I was joining an on-ramp once and I um, gave it a little bit too much throttle and it was a bit of a slippery situation with my wife in the passenger seat, so I won't be doing that again. Also, one thing I love about this car is the automatic gearbox actually works as an automatic gearbox, and it doesn't require you to put up with a misbehaving shift pattern like in older Ferraris or Lamborghinis. So you can drive this in automatic mode if you want to. On the way up in the wet, I had literally had it on cruise control, and I had it in automatic mode for the entirety of the journey, which is unheard of for me in a supercar. Even in the best gearboxes, I usually am using my paddles. But when you get a gearbox as good as this Ferrari one or the Porsche PDK system, you have no reason to when you're just cruising along. Where its limits are. Um, so driving in this weather before used to be quite like. 
the wipers don't seem to go any faster than what they're on now, which is quite uh, up, and they've decided they up oh, there, they're, they're back now. Okay, so um, it's raining a lot, and what I was saying earlier about uh, not being afraid of this car anymore because I've got some hours in it in the wet is uh, kind of disappearing as the wetter it gets. But um, yeah, hmm, this is uh, not very nice. <laughs> Turn right onto M1 uh, South. Stretching out. In so we've made a quick stop at Welcome Break in. I'm not sure where we are. This looks like a netball We're a Milton team. Keys. That's definitely a netball team. But yeah, we're in Milton Keynes, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've got chicken. I'm trying not to um, get the chicken grease in the car. So the Alcantara in this car, Alcantara, the only problem with Alcantara is that it's very, 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 very susceptible to picking up chicken grease. So we have to be careful with the chicken grease on the car. Um, so I've made sure that my wife understands the seriousness of and the I've chicken grease. And I've made sure that you've understood also. Okay. Typically you're anyway, the thank you for stuff. joining us on this journey. We're about to eat our KFC. I'm sure you don't watch that. Then we'll make our way home. We are back home now. I've got the car on trickle charge. It was a very long and stressful journey. On the way back, it involved a lot of traffic on the M25 and a lot of rain. As you can see now, I'm not sure if you can see, but the car is pretty much covered in like rain gunk. There you can see all the rain gunk. A lane was closed, there was so much traffic. People in this country, for some reason, love driving in the uh, outside lane, even when they're not driving or overtaking anyone. They'd be driving like a 16 outside lane. So it just makes the traffic even worse. But other than that, the journey was okay. Um, it took about four hours to get back. The car um, was just amazing. It handled superbly. It really is a Grand Tour, a supercar, if that makes any sense. Carried all our luggage in the back. Um, the reason I parked reversed in, normally I come in forwards. Um, I don't like the exhaust fumes, but in this situation, I had to unload the back. And if you look here, I've got a little ridge. So I can't open the boot um, when the car is facing forwards. I can, but with the door shut. So it's just a bit complicated, especially when I had loads of luggage to take out. But I loved it. I love this car. I've done that 500 mile journey now. It's shown me how versatile this car can be. Um, there was a few country roads that I managed to get a little bit of action on, um, but it was wet, so I couldn't really push it. I'm not sure if it was worth even inserting into this video. So um, yeah, um, I'll keep you updated. I'll do more posts on this car. I think this will be my new long-term Grand Tourer, um, long distance traveling mobile. Um, usually I'll take the SVJ when I'm doing things, but now, if I can get my camera to go, go there. Sorry, I'm using a gyro and I'm just getting used to the fact that the controls aren't inverted. So instead of using my um, SVJ for long distance uh, touring trips, I will uh, instead be taking my A12 Superfast. I just think it really worked well. Even though I have the Cayenne Turbo GT, this is just more exciting. The Cayenne Turbo GT is cool, but at the end of the day, it's just still an SUV and it's just a bit boring, a tad bit boring um, when you want to do something exciting. And this provided all the excitement I needed. So I just recorded a whole outro and it didn't work. But um, remember to like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing loads more trips with my, um, myself, my wife, and Hunter Auto Society, my car club. And I'll be doing some in the... Green Goblin SVJ, maybe some of the Cayenne as well. The Cayenne is such a capable car. I don't think people realize, but I feel like if I switch it to a track, I'll be able to do a few people. My ring is making noise. But any other way, other than that, have a wonderful time, day, evening, uh, and here's to more content. Bye.